from Hollywood to the Carolinas. Coming up next, my exclusive interview with actor John Volstad. It all starts now on Below the Line. It's Below the Line with George Perulis. On tonight's show... Welcome to Below the Line. I'm George Perulis. Today, I'm excited to share with you my conversation with one of Hollywood's funniest character actors now living in the Carolinas. Below the Line has the exclusive interview with actor John Volstad. His life, career, working with comedic icons and Hollywood stories that have never been told on television until now. This is my interview with John Volstad. Welcome, John. Thank you for coming. Thanks for inviting me, George. Thank you. Now, tell me about your early days in Texas. I started acting as a teenage uh, drama workshop, actually it was a musical workshop, at Casa Theater in Fort Worth, Texas. And I was... Uh, a student there and also I built sets and uh, there were the musicals we worked on were the King uh, no, um, uh, Music Man, uh, Roberta, 110 in the Shade and Camelot and so uh, for for I was like 13, 14-ish and and for um, Music Man they wanted me for the for the kids who come in I played the glockenspiel the, the uh, minuet in G you know da 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 that was a good kick and then uh, in the uh, in Camelot, I was like off stage sounds and noises as I turned the winch, you know, the th stage or brought held up uh, scenery for those guys to take it at breaks. After high school, you went yes. to London to study right. at the Actors Forum. Yes, when I got to London, I had to get into a school right away, so they saw it, that I was going to school. Eventually, I ended up at uh, Weber Douglas Academy of Dramatic Arts, and uh, and I stayed there. For two years. It was great to work with the, all the other actors who had been acting for years and years and years. There was a gentleman by the name of Kenneth Warren, big television uh, film star at the time in, in London. In 1972, you moved to Los Angeles, you played in your punk band, U.S. Customs, right. and you did plays. Yes, I worked at the Mark uh, Taper Forum, and that was like my first big stage th thing with, uh, we did Henry IV Part Two, and I played uh, the tavern drawer, Francis the tavern drawer, in, in the scene with uh, Falstaff and all his men. And of course our viewers know Richard Thomas and yeah. Annette O'Toole, and yeah. you did a play with them. I did, it was uh, Merton Movies, it was written by Coffin and Hart. Uh, and uh, Bert Shevelov was the director. He had directed, uh, like, uh, directed and co-directed uh, on Broadway, like Funny Thing Happens All the Way to Forum and uh, others like that, big shows like that in New York and Broadway. And uh, I, I played Richard Thomas' best friend, and um, it, was, it was great because there were a lot of, besides Annette O'Toole, there were other, uh, like, TV actors, like Herb Vigran, a recognizable name, and things like that. And, and, uh, and that was a lot of fun. I, I played his best friend back home. And so I played other parts as well. So that was a lot of fun. And by doing Equity Stage, you got your SAG card. Mm -hmm. And in 1975, landed your first feature film. Right. The movie was called Switchblade Sisters, right. about this greedy girl gang. And, right. and you were runt. I was. I was indeed. I was runt. And I, um, I got beat up by the girl gang, by, the, uh, by, by Switchblade Sisters, which originally they were called the Flying Jezebels or something, I think, like that. And uh, I'm making, like, rude noises to the, at, to the teachers uh, on my arm, and, uh, and then they come over and say, you shouldn't do that to the teachers. So they hit me over the head with a book and I pass out on the desk, you know. That was, that was fun, that was cool. Yeah, that was my first break. You also worked on many TV shows, Emmy Award TV series, including Chico and the Man, and mm -hmm. you knew the producer, Hal Cantor. Hal Cantor, yeah, right. He was like m my mentor at the time. Mentor and uh, kind of godfather, and who had done a lot of uh, producing and writing for years and years and years on shows and films. And he he had done uh, Diane Carroll show and and uh, and uh, Chico and the Man because I did a couple parts in Chico and in the Man, and so he was kind of my mentor at the early beginnings of my career too. 
And besides doing okay. Chico and the Man with yeah. uh, Freddie Prinz and right. Jack Albertson, mm -hmm. you worked on other TV series, an Emmy Award TV series, Charlie's Angels. Yes. You had a scene with the I Cheryl Ladd? The Cheryl Ladd, yes. Uh, it, it consisted of her uh, chasing me down because she thought I was following her. So we're in a car, we're doing a car chase and we're going down uh, this alley and I crash into these trash cans. And I'm, I'm a Polish photographer. And so I said, Glupia Amerikanskie Zobaczenie. And so I, I, I studied this. I had a friend, it's a like, stupid American girl was what it was. And then I said, Prete Gro at the end of the scene. She said, oh. she said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she walks away. That was it. Did you ever meet my favorite, Farrah Fawcett? I didn't. I had her poster at one time in my bedroom, I believe. But, but no, I didn't meet Farrah, no. Um, also, but, other TV shows at that time, yes. Chips with Eric Estrada. Chips, yes, oh yes, uh, Chips was great. And, and also Don, Don Stroud was in the episode. He played the bad guy. And um, I was the, you know, like the, the, the drive through uh, person as they come to the window. And Don Stroud is robbing us. So uh, he comes in and asks for my money and he pulls me out through the window. At, uh, the, the thing. And you also did some dramatic shows, big shows. Knott's Landing and Hill Street Blues. Well, yeah, th that was that was great. Uh, Hill Street Blues was a fr like a like a first uh, big, good, dramatic kind of thing. Even though I was playing a character role, it was a drunken homeless guy, and um, uh, uh, one of the actresses who was a recurring role and I like, can't blonde, and uh, she would just been made a detective, so she's coming in, and I th I just think she's this beautiful, hot girl walking through the station, and and I go up to her and say, Hey, buddy, come again, I get to me, and then she takes her. She's been doing learning fighting and stuff, so I get some fight pay. So she hits me, and go, I go through like a candy glass window and stuff like that. So I get stunt pay too, which is really cool. That's always yeah, good. Bang! Don't worry. Close your eyes when you go through, you know. Yeah, so then it was that, and then Knott's Landing. I was in an elevator with Michelle Lee going up. I was taking flowers and so. And you also worked on more films as well. In mm -hmm. the late 70s, you were booked on the film 1941. Right. I have to ask you, mm -hmm. what was it like being directed by Steven Spielberg? Well, it, was, it was really, really, really very cool because when I actually went in, in for the audition, I was reading for another part and uh, I got laughs and stuff. So they thought, cause I, but I was too tall at that time for the part they were looking for. So, but I got a lot of laughs and Steven Spielberg laughed. And then uh, and uh, when we actually went to shoot it, um, he was always very positive and would always, you know, I was one of like five nerds that ended up, five nerds in the USO scene in 1941. And, uh, and I remember my friend and I, uh, gave him a hat at the end of the shoot, and I think there was a scene with a tree falling us, on us at the very end of the USO scene, and stuff like that. But it was very cool to see Treat Williams, and uh, in a cameo appearance, not too many people. James Caan was in the uh, big USO fight. You know, he just he didn't want any, not just you got to look, but you know, you can see I guess James Caan in, in the fight of the fight. Yeah, which is cool. And that movie starred John Belushi. John Belushi and, and Dan Aykroyd. Uh, yep, yeah. and, and then Bobby G Chico was in it as well, along with uh, uh, Eddie Deason and um, John Candy. John Candy, Robert Stack, and uh, and Belushi, and as we said, Robert Stack and Eddie Deason and uh, Getty Watanabe and loads. Of, and oh, I think Warren Oates may have even been in that, but I, I can't, I don't remember. But Candy was always a good guy too. So. Captain Stillman. And the comedies continued as well, including the big movie, Striped, directed by Ivan Reitman, starring Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, John Candy, John Larroquette as Captain Stillman, and you played Stillman's aide. I did, yes. It was great, great. And I was a, a last-minute replacement because the, there was somebody else cast in it, and they were doing a play, so they couldn't get out of the play, so they saw me, and they liked me, and, and then like I flew out that Monday after I auditioned on Friday. And uh, Candy, Judge Reinhold was also in it as well, and Warren Oates. And it was like the uh, first time I worked with Warren Oates, and then I worked with him again when I did the, the miniseries, The Blue and the Gray. And a great guy. We had a lot of fun on, on both shows and stuff. Yeah. And uh, John Laura Kent and I did a road trip while we were in Kentucky. We went. Uh, we drove to Bowling Green, and uh, we, were, we looked like two army guys, you know, shaved heads and stuff. And and uh, and we played pool in one place, and we went to Bowling Green and. and did some dancing and stuff and messing around. And it was a lot of fun. And during yeah. some downtime, mm -hmm. I heard you would hang out in Bill Murray's trailer and you guys would play cards. Yeah, well, who yeah. Won the, who won the most? Well, actually, it was in, 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 uh, Bill, it was in John's trailer that we played like cards with dollar bills. Then in, in Bill's uh, uh, trailer, we actually 
room, we saw films. He would show films every once in a while. And like the first one we saw was Bofors Gun, I think was what they showed. And, and then in Candy's room, we played poker in his trailer and stuff like that, which was cool. And uh, yeah, but that's, that's, it was great. It was great, a lot of camaraderie and everybody was really cool and warm and, and stuff like that. Really good group of people. And then I got to go into the, uh, the, the mud wrestling scene when they're doing the mud wrestling scene in Los Angeles. There was that, uh, this old club that they had. And, and uh, I wasn't in the scene, but I got to just hang out and see everything. Really cool. The suffering that you do for your art. I know, it's really. To see women mud wrestling. I, tell you, I, I don't know what it is. It's I'm Larry. This is my brother, Daryl. And this is my other brother, Daryl. Then in 1982 came New Heart. And Daryl yes. number two was born. Yes, yeah, it was so cool. It was, you know, what was funny was um, it, my, I had a manager at the time, uh, Bo, and um, a southern gentleman as well, and uh, he had a premonition of some, that it might turn into something. So he said, I'm going to send you out. It doesn't, there's no lines or anything like that, but I think it'll turn into something. And uh, so it turned into Daryl number two and stuff. And they, the uh, casting director knew me from the theater, the Mark Taper, because he'd seen Tony and I uh, do plays and stuff. And Tony was in the L.A. Improvisational Theater and Children's Theater in L.A. And, and um, he knew that we could kind of like, like make a, be present without actually saying things and be our characters, etc. And uh, that was really very nice. Yeah. And Tony played Daryl Number One. Daryl Number One, he was yes. Tony Papenfuss, right? And Bill Sanderson, William Sanderson was Larry. Yeah, and uh, of course Bob and Peter Sklari and all the rest of the guys. Tom Poston and uh, Mary Fran. Sadly, she passed away after a few years. Julia Duffy and and you saw Julia fam Julia's family kind of grew as she was there. She had her first her daughter and then her son and and then uh, uh, you saw Peter's family come and go and it was like one big fa family with the way it kept changing and and seeing families move on and bring in new family members and things like that. Very cool. Yes. And uh, it was very sad when it ended because we, it, it was family, it was family, and because we would go to, we went to Bob's house a few times to watch the episodes, and we went to Beach House one time to watch it, and uh, um, actually, uh, Tony and I were at his daughter's 16th, we were his daughter's 16th birthday present, and then we brought out the cake and, uh, and played Happy Birthday on Combs. You know, like that? Yeah. So, uh, and then he gave us, at the time, uh, Walkmans had come out, and so we got a Walkman from Bob for, for doing that for his daughter. It was really cool. It was very nice. That was a huge show. Mm -hmm. Did you get recognized in the streets more after that? I, I, I did pr uh, fairly often, like in airports and things and, and theaters when I go, yeah, they say, aren't you Daryl? Or, you know, or, or do you really talk? And like uh, things like that. And when I go for interviews, like during the time that we were doing at New Heart, uh, they wanted to, they just brought me in to see if I could talk. So, it was, and then there was, hell, you do talk, yeah, like that. And so that was fun. And, and when we did our first press tour, we went to, all, and uh, we were Larry, Daryl, and Daryl, and so they didn't want us to do a lot of talking. They wanted us to be in character. So at the press conferences, we really didn't do that much uh, talking. You were fun. just Daryl. We were just Daryl, yeah, exactly. And uh, I know later on we did, we did some interview shows, like we were on Regis and, Regis's show at, in New York at one time, and, and I think it was like the holidays, we were in New York, and. Uh, for some reason, I think uh, Tony cut Regis's tie. He <laughs> said, you're cutting my tie. You know, and so I was kind of a, like we did uh, something with uh, a Christmas show there. Where we were wearing our, 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 long, our long johns and stuff like that. And we had turkey uh, at Christmas things. A lot of promos and stuff like that. Yeah. So you would rehearse all week, and then mm -hmm. you'd tape two shows on Friday. Yes, yeah. We'd do one for uh, the, an audience. Both shows would be audience, and like, uh, like you'd bring in schools or something for the... Uh, afternoon and then the evening would be the regular audience and and um, that's what always made a difference was great the audience is like always doing a theater doing a theater piece and stuff like that and, and we'd get laughs and stuff and Bob would always at in the evening shows he would do like one of his routines and uh, and uh, from one of his old albums and things like that and uh, it's great and then afterwards we'd shake and do a meet and greet people in the audience for both shows for both afternoon and evening but then we had the, the dinner in, in between we broke and stuff. What is the question people ask you most about Newhart? Um, they ask, uh, he seems like he was a really nice guy and I say he was a great family man. And the other one is like, you guys really seemed like brothers, uh, Larry, Daryl and Daryl. And, and that's another one because I say, yes, we were. We, 
we still are to this day. We they, they were my best men at my wedding, and uh, then I th and we were Tony and I were Bill's best men at his wedding in Vegas, and uh, and we've always been trying to, if we can, get to wherever we are, and see each other, like for like weddings and funerals, etc. Yeah. How did your life and career change after that show? <laughs> um, you, well, um, it was great because I was making money at the time, and and, and so it, it was great for money. And I, I, uh, I went on to do like uh, some like charity stuff and golf tournaments. I should have actually been working on my career, but uh, I was doing golf and charity tournaments like in Vermont. I, I went to Vermont quite a few times uh, for children's cancer camp, both Tony and I, and we would be there for a few weeks and, and hang out with the kids. And we did more like promoting the show than, than and, and ourselves, but as opposed to actually looking for more work in between. Gigs. But that was okay. It was, it, you know, it paid off. It was eight years, you know, so that was good. How many episodes? We were 85 episodes total, give or take a few. Somewhere between 80 and 85, yeah. From from 19 from 82 to 90, we shot the last one in April of 90, and uh, it looked like Bob was gonna. He was actually thinking of doing an additional year, but then uh, he went away and talked about it and ended up. I'm just gonna stop here and go on while we're on the top and stuff like that. So that was very sad, but um, it was what he needed to do. And we all have to move on, so we moved on. So, yeah. Sad move. Coming up next, more with John Volstad. We're back in a moment. When you open a book, you can explore new lands, make new friends, and discover new adventures. There are amazing possibilities when you open your mind to reading. Explore new worlds. Read. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Welcome back to Below the Line. With me is actor John Volstad. After Newhart came more films, huge films, but as they say that happens to all of us, you were left on the cutting room floor, two movies in particular. One was Ghostbusters, the other was Vacation. Tell me about Ghostbusters and you and Dan Aykroyd. Oh yes, uh, the, the scene that I was in was the, uh, there was the, the, the witches were flying over, uh, the, the ghosts were flying over the, the men in, in the, when they were sleeping over at the, at the ra rangers station and they were bothering my rangers. So I, I, the scene was to ask Dan Aykroyd, the Ghostbusters, to please stop the ghosts, and they ended up putting that on the cutting room floor. But it was like a, a trivia question in some uh, blog or something. They saw a profile of me, and they were trying to figure out who, who this actor was. They said, "Is that Dan Shore? Is that this person or that person?" And so, I guess amongst the, those bloggers, they were having like their own little contest. But uh, so then, finally, the one who got it called me and, and uh, sent me an email, and I said, "Yeah, that was me." And 
and then the, in vacation, um, we shot that up in, uh, in the Grand Canyon. There were like two, two mechanic scenes. One was with uh, John Deal and I think maybe Mickey Jones or another, another uh, actor. So two garage mechanics and I was just one garage mechanic and they were having more problems with that, with that car at that, that time and I was just changing the tire. And so uh, they decided to cut that uh, scene because there wasn't any need for it. two scenes with mechanics. Yeah. But it was cool. I got to go to the ET Lodge and hang out with uh, you know, Christy. Uh, Christy Brinkley. Christy Brinkley, yeah, Christy Brinkley and uh, and uh, Chevy Chase and uh, all those guys. And it was very, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So two classic films that are being redone. They just announced that Ghostbusters is going to be redone with an all-female lead cast. Right. And there's another Vacation movie coming out oh. where Rusty is now grown up and Chevy Chase's character is. Clark is yeah. now the grandfather, and so uh, these movies keep going on. What do you think about them keep doing these? I, as, as long as they get an audience and you know they're entertaining, I think it's great that they're they're putting them on. I, I wish I could still be in them, and uh, I could always bring my mechanic back after years and years. Maybe I've opened up a, a garage in their hometown now. Franchise, a franchise, yes, exactly, yeah. Et uh, gas stations, but um, so uh, that would be nice. But and Ghostbuster, I could always come back as a ghost, but um, we'll see what happens there. The pain of the cutting room floor. How are you notified that you were cut out of the movies? They, they sent a very nice letter. Like Harold Ramis sent one for 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 uh, for vacation, uh, saying, you know, well, we're sorry that it was a good scene, but we had to edit it out because it due to the length of the film, and we already had the one garage scene. So, so we're sorry, but but what's great is I still get paid residuals for it, so which is okay. That's always good. So yeah, yeah, because yeah, so that's good. Yes. And uh, with this, they gave me the same letter for Ghostbusters too, saying they ended up cutting it and not putting it in the film. And speaking of being cut, you also did a special one-hour episode of the Fresh oh. Prince of Bel Air. What happened there? Well, it, it started out to be it was going to be the first episode of that particular season, and they were shooting it like in a trailer park, uh, like in the south, and. Uh, uh, Will Smith didn't li like the way it was going and stuff, and so they just cut it down to just one episode, and uh, just had glimpses of the trailer park, and, and I was in in that, but but uh, and I didn't, so I was just cut out of it all <laughs> completely. But it was all right. I got to meet everybody, and uh, I was there for when when uh, Quincy Jones had like a birthday party. Was, that was pretty cool, and um, and I was also able to uh, give some scripts of a friend of mine to Will Smith and. And, but everybody else was really nice. All the whole cast was really nice and pleasant. You worked on four films with John Candy: Boris and Natasha, 1941, Vacation, and Stripes. He died at the age of 44 back in 1994, over 20 years ago. What was he like? He was a really, uh, really great, great uh, man, and he was a great father. He had a few, two kids: his wife Rose, and. Um, Really sweet, sweet guy. Very supportive and helpful if, if you were in scenes with him. And, and I remember after going away and then coming back, I went to, uh, I went to see him on the set of uh, uh, The Great Outdoors with my, my godson at the time. And he was very gracious and welcomed us in and had shots with my godson. And, and um, he was great. And he, my mom actually helped him find a house when he was looking for a house in, in Brentwood, I believe it was. Yeah. He's a great guy. In February 2014, Harold Ramis died at the age of 69. Yeah. Tell me about him. Again, a uh, very supportive guy. I remember when I first went in to see him for uh, for vacation and stuff, and they said it was good to see you again. And then uh, he said, "I'll see if I can find some place for you." And he found me, you know, put me in the scene. And uh, once again, always supportive and uh, always willing to help uh, those, you know, like other. Second City people who were looking for work and stuff. You would always put them, consider them as well, and put them, you know, first and get them into films. Really a good, you know, helping people, helping friends get work. A great director too. Really good director working with you and wanting to hear your ideas as well. So it was good. Yeah, great. Yeah. Over the years, you worked on projects starring many comedic greats: Bob Hope, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd. John Candy, Chevy Chase, Tim Allen, Freddie Prinze, Jack Albertson, Don Rickles, Tim Conway, and many others. And then there was Bob Newhart. Yeah. Tell me about Bob. Bob, uh, most gracious uh, guy and good family man you could ever meet, and um, he would, and you could see how good he was with his kids, and 
and uh, he would always laugh when you were when you were doing your scene. If he thought it was funny, he would laugh. And and um, just uh, uh, well, I've been really fortunate, and everyone pretty much that I've worked with has been very supportive and and uh, helpful in, in you know in pretty much every every way. You know, like when you do a scene, they say that was really great. You know, and we're just laughing and enjoying it. So that was. But Bob was Bob was like a, I guess an uncle I guess I guess yeah. it was cool and it was very familial all around. What did you learn about comedy from him? Uh, his, his dry sense of humor is just his uh, sense of timing. Sometimes like he wouldn't like he'd just be quiet and then say something you know to do the do the line and do the laugh line. And uh, and the same thing with Tom Post and Tom Poston would always be supportive and say, well, maybe try this or do that, you know. What will you remember most about Bob Newhart? Uh, that he was a great gentleman and father and a uh, and person to look up to, an icon. And uh, so that's what I would say. Yeah, very, very, uh, very good supportive and person. and there for you if you needed it. So, absolutely. What do you think about show business? Show business has been very, very good to me. Um, um, I, I like it in that. Uh, sadly, I didn't know how to save my money, but I love acting, I love performing, I love making people laugh and, and uh, seeing them enjoy themselves and, you know, that's always been nice for me. That's been the most important part is to like really Way, if they grow some, that'd be great too. If it, if it makes them think about things, that's great. But since I was a clown, kind of mostly, it's, uh, it's good. I like to bring happiness and uh, stuff to Because nobody knows what they have outside the world, you know, with those particular people, you know. So if I can make them happy, that's good. Make them laugh. Make them laugh. Make them laugh. Years from now, what will Hollywood say about John Volstadt? They'll say, uh, 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 John Volstead, the other brother, Darryl, uh, did, uh, spoke uh, many words without ever saying a word. And as my brother, Tony, uh, Darryl, he said, we did eloquent shrugs. So uh, we said more with eloquent shrugs than words. So that's what I think we would say, they would say. John, thank you for your time. Thank you, George. It was great. Good. Thanks. Thanks again to John Volstad, and thank you for watching. Feel free to contact us with your questions, comments, or show ideas. The email address is belowtheline21 at gmail.com, and join our fan page on Facebook. We'll see you next time. information, comments, or questions about the show, email us at belowtheline21 at gmail.com.